On this episode of the John 1911 Podcast, audio test, performative gun bands, Lamborghini's big middle finger, and no tam nonsense. Okay, good evening everybody. This is Danny and Marky, and this is episode 285, actually episode 285.2 of the John 1911 Podcast. This is a pseudo test episode. We had recorded one last night, but my audio was so jacked up that I couldn't publish it. So I'm using a different setup here today with the new software, and I think we've got it under control. And so Danny and I are uh, back here again. We're not going to – we did over an hour last night. Turns out we couldn't even publish it, which broke my heart. So just sucks. So what's going on? What's going on in the world? Well, finally, with the clarity, we'll, we are fulfilling the trilogy. The tr- So <laughs> – so let me tell you what's been so I've been I've been dealing with you know dealing with this podcast software, and then there's been um, there's been uh, you know I've got I've got you and Kraken now doing the um, doing the uh, um, moderation. Uh, the moderation for for the social media and trying to you know also work with the video the video guys uh, we're trying to get some stuff kind of squared away with different Dropbox accounts and all this other drama. It's just been, it's, I'm like going blind on, it's seven o'clock Eastern standard time and I am ready to fall over and just go to bed. Well, so me too. You know, I, uh, I, I was, uh, doing full contact consulting today. So I'm tired myself. Oh, that's right. You actually had to go out and work today. That's right. Well, yeah, consulting. There's a difference between work and consulting. <laughs> <laughs> we know. had a we had a guy send me a I, I, a regular. I'm not going to say his name because I don't think he ever gave me permission. Um, but uh, he had he had found this on the internet. And he wanted me to run it by you. He called you a tractor snob, by the way. Um, he um, you know how I saw on a front end loader. Uh, right. By the way, you are making a shit ton of noise on your microphone. So, I just moved uh, it, that. That's me. I just adjusted okay. it, so I'm all. It, that is me. Mine. My bad. I did it. Okay. And I you know, you I'm, like, sh- I, I'm, I'm like, I'm like a, ner- I'm like a nervous Nelly about all this about this audio quality. I'm gonna start screaming like Hitler in front of a bunch of fucking fucking lunatics. Like I, I, I I'm fucking gonna lose my shit. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> are you trying to say you're as nervous as a whore in church? I don't know. I mean, nervous as a whore, uh, nervous as uh, Hitler trying to, you know, convince God to send him to fucking heaven. <laughs> it's like, yeah. he's be like, yeah, thank you. No, dude, <laughs> down elevator for you. Um, I don't know what I was saying. I'm, I'm, I'm actually almost out of it. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm a little loopy. I don't drink, but this is what it'd be like if I was a little lit. So, well, um, you're, you're overtired. I mean, everything you've had going, everything you've oh. had going on at, Oh, go ahead. We were talking about yesterday. Remember that I was talking the no tams and I'm like, you know, notice to air missions. And I'm like, what the hell is an air mission? And I told you again, the listener doesn't know this because we never published it. it. You know, we never called it air mission. We called it notice to airmen. Well, you know, and that whole system got shut down and the airlines got shut down and, and all this drama and, uh, you know, how that wasn't probably necessary for what the NOTAM system is really used for, came out today that they have identified a single person who works, I guess, at the FAA, an engineer, and he is the one responsible for taking the entire system down because he loaded a cor- – they're saying he loaded a corrupt file. So Really? It, it, it's literally like they don't think they've released the guy's name, but – you know, he's in the pantheon of people. Like, you remember there was this, remember the, uh, this was, the, uh, this was when Trump was president, I think. When Trump's screaming at, at, uh, at, at, at Missile Man, Little Kim in North Korea, and they were doing the civil defense air raid test, and then they actually hit the wrong button. And so in Hawaii, they all got warning, missile attack, warning. I remember, yeah, I remember like, that. Yeah, because like one person pushed the wrong button. And so this guy is like going to be the, you know, they have, they figured out what that was. So <laughs> he probably downloaded porno stuff. God, don't, yeah. You know, like it, it, never the, say the, never. The, the most amazing thing about porn is 
it's almost like the infinite hole, which sounds like porn, but like, it doesn't matter how specific you want to get into, if you, if you, if you delve into that, there's porn for it. Like, you know, like you start with, you know, I don't know, like blondes, and then you go into six foot blondes, then you go to six foot blondes with green eyes, and then you go into six foot blondes with green eyes with size 40 was size 14 feet and then you get into six foot six foot blondes with green eyes and giant feet with like buzz haircuts and it just you can just go forever and it never stops there will oh. always be some <laughs> kind of page you yeah you, you can go forever just like the illinois democrats did on the gun list of confiscation did you see that you well, yeah. I was on the phone. I was in a meeting. I was so I'm. I don't. I, I think I was in a meeting. And so you know, like my phone. You know, I, I get text messages and phone calls. And Danny, you know, bloop sends a message. You know, it's like whatever. It's at the t- you know whatever. Bloop another message comes in from Danny. Bloop another message comes in from Danny. Ten messages later, <laughs> I'm like, Why that was the list. Like, like what the hell is this? And it's the list. Danny was sending me the list of all the guns that they have um that they have gotten that they've banned in um in, in Illinois. And I'm looking at this list and it, it's pretty long, but what was really shocking was, you know, like ARs, AKs, you know, all this other kind of stuff. They had SIG PE fifty sevens on there. Which and I described it to you. I said because I said you because you know what it is because I sent it to you. I'm like, dude, right. how does a Sig PE57 end up on this list? That's like a steampunk battle rifle from the 50s. Most no one's ever heard of this. I mean, like, like where did they get this list that's got that on it? I just thought that was super weird. That was super weird. No, no, no. If you, I know there's hundreds, if not a thousand, guns to read through. They also banned high point carbines. Oh sure, why not? It looked like they're just banning everything. Like they're banning. Um, I had to look at the list, but it had uh, Sl- slingshots, cane and able rock throwers. They had it all. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know if it had that, but you know, it had you know, it had all the usual suspects, and it, it even broke them down by name. So like, it had a lot of. You know, Bushmaster, AMT, you know, just oh, yeah. Daniel Defense and all this other kind of stuff like that. It's, and it's like this list, like this, you can't ban all this stuff. Like the Supreme well, Court, like they've already said you can't do this. Well, they're, you know, they're going to do it until they get slapped on the wrist. And, you know, then they'll just change it to something else. Or, you know, knowing uh, the liberal state of mind, they'll go after high capacity mags. You know, they're going to do something. Well, actually, it's pretty interesting, actually, if you think about it, because it's how politicians work. Okay, all right. You know, they they do this so they can pat themselves on the back and virtue signal because if they're it's performative. Okay, like this was I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to rope in a lot of political news into this into this observation. Part of the problem with electing Speaker McCarthy in the House was C-SPAN didn't just have the camera pointed at the dais where everybody kind of goes up and talks and does whatever. They were showing the entire room. And so everybody knows they're on film and they're on camera. And so they have to they have you know they have to perform for the camera. They have to perform for their constituents. They can't, they can't talk. They can't do this. They can't even be seen like, you know, like, Oh my God, you know, they had a video like AOC was sitting next to this Republican. They're like, what could they possibly be talking about? And it's, it's, it's like, that's why Twitter sucks. That's why the, the shit in Congress sucks because people are not there to legislate or not there to work out deals or get educated or talk to the people like, okay, I'm pro gun. You know, if I'm I'm a pro gun congressperson, and you know you're AOC, explain to me why you want to ban this. You know, and just have a conversation like the fuck, like what 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 are you thinking here? I can't have this conversation with you because if I'm seen on camera talking to you, I'm a traitor. All right, and so then you've got 
you've got these politicians in Chicago that know goddamn well that none of this is going to – the law that they passed will not pass constitutional muster. This is a recent Supreme Court decision. You cannot issue these blanket bans. You can regulate, quote, for the – for the, you know, for a public – for a public – safety or, or public you know for the whatever public good they want to say right. you can have limitations or however you want to structure but these these outright bans you can't do it well they're doing it for their donors for their voters for their for their mouth breathers on their side of the argument it it's just wasting everybody's time no one's going to get struck down we had one here in ohio not that long ago like the state of Col- the, the city of columbus ohio the state the state uh, the, the the state seat, the state capital, that city government up there is full blown commie, and they wanted to pass some law, you know, banning stuff, and we had to pass a law in Ohio, or maybe do the constitutional amendment, but it's a uh, the preemption clause. Basically, you cannot in your state ban stuff that the state says is legal. We had to do that in Ohio, and the pro gun guys got that through. Well, we had. I mean, we had a. We have. It's. It's. It's in our. It's in our legal system here. I mean, not. It's not even talking about the Supreme Court or the state Supreme Court. It's in our law. It's like this is going to go nowhere. So then they have. Then people have to file a lawsuit and do whatever. And it's all this performative, jive ass bullshit, you know. And it's like then and then circling around on this stuff with um, with Biden and these documents, and then Trump and the documents. It's like no one really wants to talk about what's really going on here or what happened, or maybe we need to tighten up some processes or what's considered normal, or maybe we don't know what's normal, or you know, is this a is this a, a security weakness in the country we have to address? Oh no, it's now now the you know the Republicans are gonna start saying, We got you, Democrats. Now the Democrats are like, well, we think this was a setup. It's like, no, you don't. But you have to come up and, and say some bullshit. You just can't. You just can't be like, well, we're going to have to review everything and you know, and, and do whatever. It's just this giant fucking circle jerk where it everybody's sure just just talking in circles, wasting everybody's time on this kind of stuff. And oh it yeah, just, it All gets to be ridiculous. Of him you know, signing it, the bill. Yeah, it's just it's just ridiculous, you know. But like, just all of it, like you know, like I know that the because I have fortunately I've been working all day, but like you know the Joe Biden document thing, I have been like so not interested in that because I'm like, whatever. I mean, you know, it, it's a reprieve for Trump for sure. And oh, it's huge. It, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it, it it's huge. It's huge for Trump personally because it's an example of once again. You know, the double standard with Donald Trump, and we had talked about this on the pod that didn't get published, and the argument is, well, how did they find these documents in Biden's possession? Did somebody <laughs> – did somebody um, – the, the, No, it, it's it's amazing you said that because a that Hank Johnson, the one that said how Guam would tip over if there's too many people on it, you I remember that, that one? I, was that Hank? I think that was – um, I think that I was – uh, I think that was uh, uh, um, what's her name, the yeah. the woman from California, uh, Maxine Waters. I think said no, that. I thought it was Hank Johnson. Well, anyway, he came out today, and it's all a conspiracy that all the Biden documents were planted in his locked garage next to his Corvette. Yeah, you know, I mean, whatevs. I mean, it's just. You know, but it's like, well, well, here's here's a legitimate argument, okay? And like, so just just to make the point, and we had made this on on pods. So I feel like it's deja vu, the unpublished pod. You know, the National Archives for forensically, basically forensically determined that Trump had documents within eighteen months, maybe maybe a year, twelve months, and we're like, hey, you know, we're talking, we're talking. They're talking back. We're talking. You know, it turns out a lot of this. We don't know what all the documents were. We know some of them were Donald Trump's I love me stuff or his my I love me wall, you know, his hero wall, like the letters from Kim Jong Il and all that, whatever, you know, all that stuff. But it's like, okay, these documents that they found at the think tank at Biden Penn or Ben Biden, Penn Biden, whatever it's called. And then, you know, by the Corvette. 
these aren't these aren't from President Biden's administration. These are these predate Donald Trump's administration. These are from President Obama's administration. These are Vice President Biden documents. And it's been six years, seven years since Biden's been in office. What to what you know, they 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 Trump's got an argument. How come you're crawling up my asshole in 18 months? But now six years later, we're starting to now find out all this, you know, there's there could be other issues with other documents. And we had talked about this on pod. It's like how many presidential libraries, you know, I mean, just like just the, you know, just look at George Bo- George W. Bush's documents leading up to the Iraq war. You know, oh, yeah. the intel assessments and everything. And some of that's still classified. You know, I just, like I, where is that? Is does I, any is just, any of that shit in the in the is in the Biden or in the uh, Bush presidential library down there at um uh was that was that Southern Methodist whatever wherever the his library is at it's a college like yeah, there's somewhere there, in Texas there's shit at all these presidential libraries. But I personally am enjoying watching the mainstream media try to downplay this and say. Trump, Trump's documents are worse than Biden's documents, so Trump is guilty. And the special prosecutor, his name is Her, H-U-R, that was appointed. You don't think he's a Garland yes man? Oh, come on. Are people that, do they feel people are that naive? Was the, was the special prosecutor a original Trump appointee? Or is this I, a... I, I he mean, started with the DOJ in 2003. Okay, I mean, I you know, I mean, all this is just jive ass bullshit. I, it I'm is. just, I'm trying, I'm trying to act like I care, but I just don't. I, I don't like all these the people. only one. The only one that should care is Trump because he could breathe a big sigh of relief because if the DOJ continues to go after Trump and it is and it is pointed in a one way against Trump and nothing against Biden. Then yeah, Trump Trump's words are echoing true. The okay. swamp, it's this, it's okay. that, right. it's let, let, Let's dial this in for the listener, because I'm not so certain that you know this, because we may have talked about it, we may not have. Why are they prosecuting Donald Trump for the documents? Because they don't want him to run. They don't want him to run for what? For president. Okay. And so if Donald Trump, if they prosecute Donald Trump for documents and he's convicted of a what? I don't know if that would be felony or it would probably be a felony. Okay. All right. It would be a felony. And so the argument is, well, he, he Donald Trump will be a convicted felon. He can't run for president. Right. And so. Fox News and everybody that supports Trump is like, we got to stop this. And then, you know, the people on CNN and Joy Behar and the rest of them, they're like, he's yeah. guilty. We got to do this. Neither of this, n- n- neither of these two conditions, if Trump's guilty of a felony or not guilty of a felony, makes a difference here. The Constitution of the United States if it doesn't specifically say it, it isn't in there. The Constitution is silent on qualifications to be president other than being a natural I see a natural born US citizen. And I think you have to be 35 years of age or older. And you can never like, I mean, there but there there's it there's only a few things, there's only a few conditions. The Constitution does not say anything about legal felon status. None of this. There is constitutionally, there is if if the American people, if the American constitutionally, if the American people want to elect Jeffrey Dahmer as president of the United States, constitutionally. Within the, the the word of the Constitution, there is nothing to stop that. Yeah. 
no, not yeah. No, 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 no. No, no, no I no. just thought no. that Dahmer no. could give himself a pardon and walk out. No, 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 yeah. News, Sean Hannity, all these fucking assholes spend hours every day talking about nothing so they can get people to watch their TV show when none of this matters. But they don't want to say that because they don't want to even broach the idea that Donald Trump could be guilty. Well, now it's like, well, okay, it looks like Biden could be guilty. So now it's like, well, maybe they're more open to guilty. It's like, all right, so, but would it matter? No. No. I I, I have a theory. Go ahead. I, Constitution, go ahead, there is no way to stop Donald Trump from running for president. Now, there are people who will get on TV and they will say shit like, after the Civil War, we passed laws that barred members of uh, the South. The Confederacy. The, uh, the, yeah, the members of the officers in the Confederacy from doing and, and, and holding certain offices or being certain things. I remember reading that. Yeah, that's that's all perfectly fine because those are statutes. Those are statutes for local and state laws and for state offices. You can have a law that says you cannot run for dog catcher if you're a felon. You'd be like, okay, you dog, you're you're disqualified because you're a convicted felon for running for dog catcher. The Constitution doesn't say that. And it's like, well, you can't let a person run as a felon, be elected president, because you, you just you can't. The dog catcher, a felony for a felon for dog catcher, you have a law against that. You should have a law against having a felon uh, be elected president. OK, yeah. You know what that's called? A constitutional amendment. If you want to pass a constitutional amendment and get it two thirds of the House, two thirds of the Senate and two thirds of the states at a constitutional convention to ratify an amendment that says convicted felons cannot run for president, you can do that. But the way the Constitution sits right now, this argument, this fight of trying to stop Donald Trump from running for president is a lie. It is a constitutional lie. And I'm pissed off at CNN because they want to run everybody to death with this. But I'm pissed off at Fox News because they don't want to say that shit either for some reason. Because it doesn't make good television. Yeah. It's it's like they're going tit for tat, goose and gander. It's it, it's it's just like a big game in Washington. Yeah, this is just this is just like what I talked about. Let's pass a law banning all of these guns. And it's like we just the Supreme Court just said you can't do that. We're going to do it anyway. Hey, let's pass a law in Columbus to banning people from from having these guns. We have a law in the state of Ohio that says you can't do that. We're going to do it anyway. It's because you know it's like we're gonna we're gonna sit here and we're gonna pretend that um, you know we're gonna argue like okay like during Matt G- or during uh, uh, Speaker McCarthy when he's trying to get himself elected for the speakership. He, you know, I don't know how they're like, they're like on vote whatever. And they had finally that, you know, so many votes and it failed, didn't pass. People voting present, people voting no, people voting for other people. And they're whittling them down. And you saw the video, right? You saw yes. the video of the, of the, uh, of the congressman who kind of went after Matt Getz. Right. And he was held back. The guy and put his hand back. around him. Yes, yeah, I watched and, it. Yeah. And would you know, okay. Do you know why? That happened. Sure, the cameras were on him. No, but what was the reason? So he could bring attention to himself. That's what I think. Who was attacking? I think the guy just wanted the fifteen minutes of fame. No, they had been. They're sitting there having the deal for hours and hours and days and days, and they they're negotiating, 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 negotiating. And finally, it's like whatever vote it is, and they have they have a deal. Matt Get, Gates or Gets, whatever his name is, he's like, I'm going, okay, I agree to this deal and these terms, and we'll vote. 
And then I walk out there in front of the fucking cameras, and Matt Getz all of a sudden decides, nah, thumbs down, just to be a fucking dickhead because he's on television. And I would have wanted to beat the fuck out of him myself. And that that alone was for television. That was because Matt Gates is a psychopath, and this is why the like the like the, you know courts don't like it when um, they have cameras in courtrooms because people perform for the audience at home, not for the benefit of the jury or the people that are uh, you know the people that are sitting there on either side of of, of the case. Which is terrible. It's terrible for the country. It's terrible for the judicial system. It's terrible for democracy. It's it's terrible. It's just terrible. You know. But if but if anything, Matt Matt Gates did get the concessions out of McCarthy because I don't trust McCarthy as far as I could throw your tractor. That's fine. I'm not saying that either. I mean, McCarthy. I, I McCarthy's a, a, a you know a party guy. Like, but I mean, like, okay, but like. Okay, Jim Jordan supports McCarthy. Marjorie Taylor Greene supports McCarthy. I mean, all I'm saying is it's not like Matt Gates. It's like Matt Gates versus the Tea Party here. I mean, uh, or uh, or uh, um, um, the establishment. Uh, no, it's not like it's uh, uh, the Speaker McCarthy versus the Tea Party. So I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of this that goes on just so people can fucking be famous. And it just, it just, I just, I'm just disgusted by it. I mean, it, I, it's so obvious to me. But it's been going on since we've created this country. So, you know, nothing is ever going to be in full unison. You know that. Well, and it's, okay. It is, getting, it is <laughs> okay. getting worse with the advent of television and social media. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So... All right, here's another example of television destroying politics. So do you remember in, in the Constitution, since we're, this, would be, this would be the Constitution episode, the Constitution says that the President of the United States shall uh, present to Congress a report, a State of the Union, right? Correct. And that's the State of the Union address, Right. All right. Yeah, I mean, no, that that's what it is, right? It's the State of the Union address. That right. right. I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to figure out what you're setting me up for. But keep I'm going. I'm setting you. I'm setting you up for because you know, uh, his, the history of this country goes over 200 years, and not just the last 40. Okay. It used to be that the President of the United States would write a letter and send it over to Congress, and they would they would receive the letter, and it was a letter, and then you had Woodrow Wilson decided. He was going to come over and he was going to give a speech because I think it's for the radio or something like Wilson decided Will Woodrow Wilson decided to create the big the first iteration of the idea of uh, the uh, State of the Union address to both houses of Congress come together. And it was like, uh, OK. And then after Wilson's out, it kind of went away. It, it kind of went low key. Like, I don't even think Eisenhower did. State of the Unions, he just wrote a letter or something. Or like maybe he did a State of the Union, like he might have done like a little, maybe they did a little speech from the Oval Office. Like we're going to, here's a here's a State of the Union, we're going to, here's a 30, oh, oh, I, I do remember this. Eisenhower used to do the State of the Union at like three o'clock in the afternoon. As a matter of fact, it was like one o'clock, they would do the State of the Union at like 11 a.m. or if it was like at one o'clock and then they would have a lunch. And they would all come together and have a lunch. And so that was that's what the State of the Union was. Well, that doesn't make good fucking TV because everybody works during the day. And so people are home at night. And I think it was LBJ who decided he, he started the modern State of the Union broadcast on primetime television at night. This performative fucking bullshit. That just waste everybody's time. No, That's, actually, actually, FDR did with his fireside chats when he had them in the evening to well, cap, F, to F, captivate no, no, the audience. Oh uh, no, uh, no, no, no! People, no politicians use the radio. I mean, um, I mean, Kennedy beat uh, Nixon in the the debate in nineteen sixty televised debate. I mean, it was the flop sweat debate, but. 
but it, it was no, it was it was Woodrow Wilson who started this bullshit with the State of the Union, the State of the Union, and then LBA, LBJ decided I don't want to have this as a lunch in the middle of the day. I want to have primetime TV at night. And so or they his did exposure. all that. Yeah, because more exposure, and it's so it's per, it's performative. It's a waste of everybody's time. It doesn't have to be that way. And that's what all of this is about Trump. All of this is bullshit about Trump. Because, again, what we talked about on the podcast, you know, I don't care what happens with the documents. I don't care. I don't care where Donald Trump sticks his dick. Okay? I don't care. I don't care who comes out and says Donald Trump's crazy because, honestly, he's a little crazy. Okay? But I, I gave him money. I voted him for him twice. If he, I'll vote for him again. Probably. But here's the thing. If he wins, if he start, if he goes to Iowa and then he does good and he goes to New Hampshire and he does good, then he goes to South Carolina and he does good, and then he rolls into Super Tuesday and does good, guess what? He's gonna run, he's gonna be the nominee for president. And it has none of this wasting hours of everybody's lives watching these fucking TV shows. These assholes, these opinions, like, well, guilty, he's more guilty, or he cooperated with the National Archives, and this person didn't cooperate with the National Archives. Like, none of this matters. The Constitution no, is very not. clear. The Constitution is very clear. You can be the worst person in the world as long as you are a U.S. citizen and 35 years of age or older, and you can get elected president of the United States. I think you should get in your tractor tomorrow morning, nice and early, drive down to Liar's Corner and get their take on all this. I was, I've been invited. There's the Liar's Table. Yeah, I've been invited. Um, I do need some tractor. I've been in the office all day today. Um, <laughs> Every I, uh, town has one. I know, we have I, one. <laughs> I know I'm just blowing steam tonight. I'm just like, God, I hate all this shit. Um, they have one. They invited because, you know, what it was, they hit because when we set up the range and we hired people and they started, you know, like contractors to build the ranges, and uh, they're like, "You ought to come on down to the VFW hall in the mornings and whatever, blah blah blah." Because and it turns out that they would all talk, and so that's how the whole town found out about about the range and kind of what was going on up there, and you know where we kind of had some grumblings of possible trouble. But it was it was almost like an ambush. They were trying to get me to come down there and to eat breakfast with them at like five or six in the morning, um, you know, at their at their liars table. <laughs> the town elders. The town elders, yeah. So, but um, <laughs> yeah, it, you know the, the the whole thing of I'm, the whole political scheme of things, be it Democrat, Republican, whatever. It's and I think it's really starting to turn a lot of people's taste away from it because it, it's just pomp and circumstance. And, but like you said, be it Hannity, be it morning Joe, be it whatever side of your aisle they're on, they throw out catchphrases to drag people in. And to me, it's amazing how many people don't read between the lines. They just their their attention span is what five minutes mm -hmm. for the headlines. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, they could be for something and then they're against something, and no one will remember that they were for something before. You know, That's like we talked about this. Like, okay, here, buddy. Okay, you know, I've talked about how you know when Donald Trump was president, the Democrats were against the vaccine. And then as soon as uh, as soon as uh, uh, Biden and Kamala, Ho and the, Joe and the Ho, um, become get in the White House, suddenly they're for the vaccine, the same vaccine that you know Kamala was like. Can they? Kamala was like, I wouldn't trust any fucking vaccine, whatever. But you know, and it's like, bitch, we're trying to get the fucking black population to fucking. They're not even taking this fucking thing. You're not helping. And so then now you know, but everybody gets a turn, right? And so you know, it's like. Pfizer was the good vaccine, and now Pfizer, it's like, well, all the data's coming out, and there's the heart issues, and, you know, all this other kind of stuff. I'm a firm believer that everybody gets a turn. Like, you're going to be up, and then you're going to be down, and you're going to be up, and you're going to be down. So right now, right now, I've noticed the media is really starting to turn on, you know, how they rushed the vaccines. They didn't do a lot of testing because they, they didn't do a lot of testing. Everyone knew it. That's why the pharmaceutical companies got um, um, 
you know, they got immunity, basically, no pun intended. They, right. you know, they from you know being prosecuted, uh, or held, or held, you know, held, held negligent if things go wrong if they take the vaccine because it was a national emergency. Well, you know, the, now now the data is coming out, and people are like, you know, a lot of people that we thought were going to die didn't die. Young people didn't get sick, you know, and so things are different now. But people were panicked back in, you know, like nine eleven. Like people act like they knew everything that was going on on September 11th, September 12th. And it's like, I remember that day and those days. And that is not, we fucking, there were rumors and no one knew what the fuck was going on. And so now what's happening is the data is turning against the vaccine. Okay. And we're going to go into a period of Republicans holding hearings and, you know, then Fauci and all, we all need to do all that. And we're going to, and we need to have hearings about what happened in, in, Wuhan, China. Like, don't worry. We just went. We just, you know, the that's probably one of the big. I mean, what happened in Wuhan, China, with this virus, is one of the seminal events in human history. You know, yeah. like Chernobyl, dropping a nuclear bomb, Magellan sailing around, sailing around the world. You know, some, you know, some caveman discovering fire. You know what I mean? Like. Yep. Uh, Thomas Edison with electricity, the Chinese inventing, you know, uh, gunpowder. Like these are things that are important, you know, and the Chinese sliming the fucking world with this virus. You know, we had a 9-11 commission talking about 9-11. We haven't had a Wuhan virus commission. No, we have not. You know, it's like, that's real weird. We're going to have to have that. But what's going to happen is the shit's going to turn against the virus. Okay. And. I predict, or against the vaccines, and I predict about probably May of 2023, the Democratic campaign managers and spin doctors are going to start coming out and saying, by May of 2023, the Donald Trump vaccine. This is Donald <laughs> Trump's fault. I, you, I, you, I tell you, because it, it, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, or I guess no, I guess it'd be May of twenty twenty four because the election will be in yeah. So May of next year, not this year. They're going to come out and they're going to be like, oh yeah, that that vaccine, that's Donald Trump's vaccine. Everyone knew that, and everyone's gonna be like, we that's all. Everyone knew that's Donald Trump's vaccine, and it's like, wait a minute, like all yeah. these people that support Donald Trump, they don't say it's his vaccine. You know, it, the, it, it's interesting. The, the, the thing with the vaccine is just like all this other shit with, with politics anymore, is it becomes who, whose jersey you're wearing. It's like, you know, I remember Donald Trump showing up at some of these events and being like, you should take the vaccine and people booing him. You know, because a lot of, a lot of people were like, I'm not taking that fucking thing, especially as stuff started coming out. It's like, well, is it his? Is it not his? Does he get credit for it? Does he not get credit for it? Because I seem to remember when Donald Trump was president that they announced they the rumors had come out that they had found a, they had created a vaccine. Pfizer did, and they were pressured at the last minute to not announce it until after the date of the election in 2020. That doesn't surprise me. Because it was going, no, it, it, this was a known thing. This came out and it was, yeah, and like, like the, the emails, like, you can't do this. You got to wait. And they waited two weeks because you can't give the boost to Trump. And so we've gone from a situation to where don't announce the vaccine because you're going to help President Trump in November to now, it, and Kamala not liking the vaccine, to now Kamala's for the vaccine. Okay, and they're all for the vaccine. And if you don't take the vaccine, you're a hilljack Republican. And then as soon as the vaccine turns again, spring of 2024, going into the silly season for the next election, this will be Donald Trump's vaccine again. Like, the, the, like do you see how crazy everything is anymore with like the media and the news? Why no one can stand any of this anymore. No, nope. like I can't stand. Like I can't stand. Like I like Fox News. I just can't stand them. You know, I I mean, I can't stand like you know, like Joy Behar and the rest of them. Fox oh. News is right there with me. Yeah, they are. But on a positive note, used car prices have dropped twenty eight percent for the wholesale really? value. Twenty eight percent today. 
That's good. Though. And uh, yeah. And how about those that paid the overinflated prices just a few months ago? So they probably paid 20% over and it dropped 48%. So they're 50% over, uh, you know, upside down and being in that car. It's insane, isn't it? Well, I mean, hey, look, I mean, um, when I bought a Porsche and during, what was that, 20, so it's today, so it's 2023. When did I buy that Porsche? I've had the Porsche two years just ago. A, two, it, 21. A, was that 21? So, yeah, I guess they're coming in two years. So, um, you asked me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think so. It's like, I know I've had it. So, I mean, I bought, I mean, I bought a used car that was high in the market. Like, and I realized that it was high in the market. It wasn't, I didn't feel like it was, they weren't, it wasn't gouging me, but, um, and it was a dealer that, you know, it wasn't a Porsche dealer. And, um, but I, I'm certain if I were to take that car, I put, what 10 or 20,000 miles. I can't remember what I put on that car. I'm sure if I took that car in today and tried to get a price for it or try to sell it, at least, I mean, it would, I'm sure I'm probably upside down on it. No, maybe not. Junior made out pretty well. I told you those numbers. Actually, I want to talk to you about that in a minute, but the thing is, I, I'm not selling the car. I knew I wasn't selling the car. I'm keeping the car. Like it's fine because like, I'm going to go, I'm going long on the car. I'm not trying to get my money out of the car. You know, there's people that buy cars and want to either have it maintain value or make money. It's like, well, that wasn't why I bought the car. But, but if somebody, yeah, but if someone threw an extra 400 uh, K at you said, Hey, I want to buy your car. You wouldn't sell it. I mean, probably I would. I'm not saying that. <laughs> well, some cars are investments. Well, okay. All right. I want to talk. So Danny's talking about his son had bought a, we, we referenced it on the pod, bought a, um, Dan, I mean, it's fair to say your one of your sons is right. basically an exotic car buyer, right? I mean, there's just a dude buys, I mean, got to buy that car. And he, he's the kind of guy that buys exotic cars from dealers. Like, I mean, it's, he's on the list, like, and, and, and being on that list means you're a regular customer. The chances, if if there was a car that was that hard to get, a guy like me probably could not walk into a dealer, even if the car was on the floor, and they wouldn't sell to me because they would sell it to a repeat customer before they sold it to me. Correct. Yeah. So, um, so did you hear about the latest Lamborghini supercar that came out? No, the only thing I've seen about cars is they are now extracting them from the uh, sunken uh, ocean liner. Oh yeah, did you the, see uh, that? The car carriers, yeah, the two car. Yeah, carriers. did you see that? No, but I, mean, I I knew I knew a guy who lost the car. Uh, the one that the one of them one of them sank and one of them burned to the ground or burned down. But um, um, so Lamborghini. So like your the the car your son has like the last of the. V12 supercars. Naturally right? aspirated. Yeah, naturally aspirated last of the V12 supercars. And everything else is going to be hybrid. And so you're going to love this. This, I saw this, and I'm literally like, this is Lamborghini a big fuck you middle finger to everybody. So Lamborghini's got their hybrid supercar out. I can't remember what it's called. It's been preliminarily released with some of the press. It's not available yet, but it's there, you know, like, like the gun writers get, you know, first, you know, first dibs at, at, at shooting them. Right. So this car, it's like, well, this is the hybrid car. I think it's, and it looks like, a, it looks like your son's car. It looks like a Murcielago, whatever, like, you know, it looks like a Lamborghini. Like it looks like a, like what all the Lamborghinis that kind of have a look in the past 15 years, right. you know, once they moved off of Countach. So it has that look. And it's like, okay, well, how big's the motor in this hybrid? They go 12 cylinder. I'm like, wait a minute, it's a 12 no. cylinder? I thought we were, you're having a 12 cylinder hybrid. Okay. Well, how much horsepower does this car have? I think they said it's like 900 and some horsepower. And it's like, okay, so it it's a hybrid, right? It's like, yeah. And well, how 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 does the battery work in it? 
So, you know, you can, can you run it like, you know, how far can you go on your battery charge? And they go, it doesn't have a battery in it. It's got a capacitor. And you're like, what the fuck does that even mean? And then they start explaining it and they go, well, you defer what a capacitor is. A capacitor is a, you know, a, a device on a, um, a piece of electronics and it very quickly can, pull, can take in an electric charge and even more quickly shoot out an electric charge. Now, a capacitor can't store an electric charge for hours or days or months or weeks or months, but you know they can store it for a certain amount of time. So here's what Lamborghini has done. They have set up this new car with a 12-cylinder engine. It's a hybrid, and when you pump the brakes, the brakes – Power from, you know, electric from the brakes gets put in this giant, it's a giant capacitor. I don't know what this thing would cost, but it's apparently a giant capacitor. And you pump the brakes, and because it's a capacitor, it can take the charge much more quickly than a battery can. Batteries have to deal with chemistry, and they take time. Where a capacitor very quickly is, and it's charged up. And then when you punch the gas, the capacitor very quickly shoots out electric to four little booster motors i guess on each tire maybe it's two but you know whatever the the high the the the, the electric motors are around the wheels and that gives you your extra say 200 horsepower of boost instantly from say 700 from the engine and they get to they get to 900 so it's a 12 cylinder hybrid and they get you get all the credit and whatever bullshit you want to do for a hybrid car. And so this is their this is Lamborghini's hybrid car. This no one's talking about this in this way. This is the biggest middle finger that I think I've ever seen an automotive dealer do to the hippies. This is unreal what they've done. This is. Well, I'm glad I'm glad that Junior got out at you know the nice margin that he did. Then well, here's the thing because. The word was, everybody said, everything after your son's car is going to be hybrid. It's going to be end of the 12-cylinder engine. And it's going to be like, oh, fuck. I, I wonder what's happened to the that car that your son sold, got all the money for it, because looks like there's a 12-cylinder after it. Yeah, very, very true. Do you remember what that very car true. was called? Your son's car? Yeah, an Aventador. Yeah, like, I... I there, there was the there was Diablo, the Murcielago, then the Aventador, no. but I think it was like an Aventador something. Like I think it. I no, the uh, um, Ultima. Ultima, yeah, that's so that okay, yeah, because the Aventador one, Ultima, yeah, Ultima, and so that was the hot shit car, and so I'm curious, like I don't know, did the Aventador Ultimas are they going to come down? You know, because it's I, like I don't know, I could get a I could get a twelve cylinder Lamborghini that's faster. Than the Ultima, yeah, and it's like, well, why would I want the Ultima if I could have this one? If that, if you have to have latest and greatest, well, how much? Then you have to ask yourself a question: How much more would it be than the Ultima? But remember, the Ultima production run stopped this year. That was the last V twelve naturally aspirated. It didn't have extra drive wheels. It didn't have this. It didn't have that. Maybe it was a a purist model. I don't know. I you know that I drive a Rambler, so I really don't know what's <laughs> going. <laughs> a clapped out Edsel, and I'm happy. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, where you and I are, and you know, you're more qualified to talk about than I am, but you know, I, I don't want to talk out of turn about Lamborghinis, but I, I was, when I saw this Lamborghini quote hybrid, I was like, man, I love, it's like, it's stuff like that. When I was a kid that made me love Lamborghini, I'm a Lamborghini guy. And it's like, oh my God, that is so awesome. Now, did you hear what's been going on with the Lamborghini SUVs? Because the used car price, I heard it's not a. Well, I did hear it's not a true Lamborghini. It's actually just badged as one made by someone else. Is the only thing I heard. Audi, well, Audi bought Lamborghini, I believe. Audi owns Lamborghini. So, like for example, the um, the Gallardos 
that have the eight cylinder engine in them, the little baby Lamborghinis when they were making them. I don't think they do Gallardos anymore. They stopped that a long time ago. But that was an Audi engine. That wasn't the Lamborghini engine. That was an Audi engine. But because you know really? Audi had the technology, Lamborghini was such a boutique company. They just they were kind of, you know, Audi brought a lot of money, and I think it's Audi brought a lot of money and technology to their manufacturing processes. So, but here's the thing. So, you know, they had made these Lamborghini SUVs. They're pretty cool. I mean, it's the same body as as an Audi or what like they people say it's a rebadged Audi. I wouldn't go that far cuz you know, there's a um the um the Bent, you know, the Bentley Continental GT, the car that yes, looks like a do. Mustang. That right. car, that frame was the same frame as the Volkswagen Phaeton. Like, you could literally, like, it's the same car. It's just, you know, I mean, like, it's a different body on it. And I think it had the same engine, just tuned differently. And it was just as unreliable and expensive to maintain. So you do see those crossovers. Well, the thing is, Lamborghini, you know, it's like, you know, the, 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 uh, the Muras and then the, you know, the various cars through the 70s and the Countaches, they made those for 25 or so years. And then they go into the Diablos and all that. Well, Lamborghini has come out with the SUV. And Lamborghini, like I had heard a number, they had sold, this was a year, we talked about it on podcast, like they had sold 8,000 of these, of these SUVs. Lamborghini had made, like in the first year, year and a half of this SUV, they had made more of these SUVs. Like it was around 8,000. Then Lamborghini as a company has produced cars in total since their inception. Well, that's because you pick up the uh, Audi, uh, you know, mass production lines. Uh huh. You know, and so that's exactly but why. You get, but you get, but you get the, the, you get the, there's apparently these Lamborghini SUVs are pretty, are pretty cool. I'd love to drive one. And, um, well, you know, the car prices were going sky high and people were spending money on cars. And, you know, the first thing I heard They're coming down now, Oh, I heard a few weeks ago that there were 1200, uh, Mercedes G wagons for sale on DuPont registry. Uh, really? a few months ago. And it was like a month or two ago. Or, and it was like, Oh boy. Cause you couldn't get a G wagon. For nothing. For, you couldn't I know. find one. And now there's like, because, you know, it's like all the crypto money kids are losing their ass and all this other kind of stuff. And so, you know, people are like way upside down on these G Wagons. You know, like they, they're, they, you could be like over 180,000 over list, you know, and it's like wow. you keep the car for a year, you know, get all these options. You'd be 100,000 over list. Like you can, you, you can be $300,000 in some of these G Wagons, these special limited whatever things. And then you know, keep it a year or two, then you want to trade it in. And now nobody wants to give them money for a G Wagon because they're not selling. And, you know, the prices are coming down. So the residual value, they aren't going up in value, they're declining. Right. I have heard now that a bunch of kids that went out and bought these Lamborghini SUVs because it's like, oh, I'll drive it for a year, then I'll trade it in, and it's a Lamborghini, I'll make money and do whatever. They are losing their ass on these SUVs. They, wow. I heard, I, I heard that that does not that does not surprise me. All I could do is knock on wood that Junior got out at the right time. I mean, I I have heard that it is a bloodbath, and you know what? And the thing is, it's like I would be super. I mean, you know, I I don't know. Like, do I? Do, I mean, do I need because they're small SUVs? Do I need one? It's like I don't know. I mean, I mean, at the right price. I mean, if 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 I could get it, if I could get it serviced, there was an Audi. So I could if I could get it serviced at Audi here, maybe, you know, like I don't know, maybe maybe at the right price, it, it would be interesting car to maybe have, you know, I mean to drive it, like you know, it's like a daily or whatever. That would be interesting. Did you see the? Do, um, oh, go ahead. Do you know how much uh, that Lamborghini oil change was? Take a guess. For the ultimate, yeah, twenty five hundred dollars on the button, <laughs> on the damn button. <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> but fortunately, the first one was through the dealer. And before the second one came, it was down the road. <laughs> $2,500 because to get to everything, you have to take the subframe off, this, that, and the other things. Probably got a full, fully enclosed bottom. And so, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. So, I mean, like, I know on some of these cars, like some of these Ferraris, like some of these older Ferraris, like, like just to do timing belt changes, you got to drop the whole engine just to get right. to the belts and stuff. And it's like, oh, yeah, my God, insane, like, it? that's what it really hurts these cars. So did you see that Ferrari has come out with they have they have their it's not out out, but it's Ferrari's got an SUV. No, let me um, let me uh, let me find it here for you. I'm going to send you a text. Um, so, so Phil, so, so uh, stretch for me, say something while I type this. Um, I need the oil changed in my Rambler and I'm going to run to Kmart and pick up their flashing blue light oil and it'll be ready to go. Okay. So here is, here is the Ferrari Puro Sang. So I'm going to send you, can I send it? Where should I send it to your, should I send the, it? The, We'll send it to what you always send me, everything. Okay, I'll send it to you. I don't know if it'll mess up the pot, if you'll get a jing on your... So there's a picture of the Ferrari SUV, and it's a... Um, yep, there it is. It's red. It's a four-door, and I think it's got a 12-cylinder in it. And um, it... Uh, apparently, a full-size person can get in the back. And so, but also really? what's interesting is I, the roof line comes down. So like, if you're like six foot four, I'm six one, it'd probably be a little tight me back there, probably touching my hair, but, um, or my bald spot on my head, but, um, uh, see what I did there. You but, got um, the, well, you, you went bald by rubbing it off on the back. Seat yeah. That's car. what it was. Yeah. You know, high class problems, you know, I've got, it's my, it's my Ferrari friction spot. But um, what's interesting is because what they did to save space and make it easier to get into the car, um, they the the rear doors are suicide doors, so they open up reverse. I'll put a I'll put a picture of this into the into the podcast notes on the. That's website. a sharp. That's very sharp looking. I got I got it. I it, like that red. It's a good looking car. I think it's the best looking of these. SUVs, these exotic SUVs that I've ever seen. I'm like, that's a hot goddamn car. I would love to know the list price on that bad boy. They, it's, it's again, it's, I, it's one of those things where. If you I, have to ask, you can't afford it. I think it's north. I think the rumor was it's going to be north of 400 with all the options are going to be in the 500s. And the reality a, is, you're not gonna you're not gonna get one because they're you're just, not on the list. You're not on the list because it's gonna be a super rare car. But it's like I I gotta be honest with you. I mean, of all the cars, I like I'd like to put this next to the Lamborghini to the Lamborghini one and be like, it's a hot. I mean, this is this is a hot car. I think they did a really good job with this. You know, I hope it comes out. I mean, I I, I mean, I I, phys, I have vision visually seen one i've seen a guy walking around it getting in it and getting in the back so really? it's not a mock-up it exists wow that is a nice looking car yeah and you could kind of use that as a daily driver yeah yeah uh i'm running to get a gallon of milk i'll just take the ferrari but you know what i'll be honest with you if this car this ferrari in red and there's a lot of car people that aren't car people like these Lamborghini SUVs, you see them, but people don't see them. I think a lot of people, if you're not a car person and this was just driving around you in traffic, you might think this is a Mazda or something. That's, that's the first thing I thought of when I looked at it. It almost looks like it copied the Mazda CX-5. It's got, I mean, it's, 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 it's got a good look to it. It really does. It's like, yes, it does. I mean, yes, I, it does. I, maybe Jay Leno will pop up with one on his YouTube channel and like do a real, a real test of it. But it's like the idea, I have to admit there's something that appeals to me. The idea of, I mean, look, okay. I carry expensive guns. 
and I I'm da- I daily drive them. You know, like back in the day, it was a three thousand dollar gun. Now it's a four and five thousand dollar gun. You know, and it's like I'm gonna shoot and carry and bang up the best gun I can because that's just I'm a car guy. I mean, I'm a gun guy. I I, I you know, it's what I. It's like I'm gonna. I, I like guns. I like nice guns, and I shoot them. A performance based shooter, you know. And the idea of having all this money tied up in some of these cars that you can't really drive all the time—that's one of the appeals, I guess, kind of of the Porsche. Is they really are daily drivable? And you look at this Ferrari. Like I don't know how reliable like a Ferrari is, but conceptually, this could be a daily driver. And that's super interesting. I, I don't think I would daily driver it. Well, because it says Ferrari on it. You, well, I mean, just, well, I mean, you know, it depends. I mean, I don't know. Are you going down to the, I mean, you, I mean, you're going down to buy the scratch off down at the, at the ghetto gas station. Maybe, maybe it'll take your Ferrari. I mean, I don't know. I mean, just, it kind of, I guess it kind of depends on your life, right? So. Yeah, well, maybe you could win that one million or one billion dollar lottery. Then you could have it for daily driver. Are they up to a billion now? One point three billion. Didn't they just have a billion dollar lottery? Didn't somebody? Yeah, they did. And in Illinois, was the winner, and he still remained anonymous. Good for him. That's a smart thing to do. Like I thought, like how come we're already at a billion again? Is it inflation? Like I remember, it used to take six months to get to like a billion dollar lottery. Right. Well, times are hard. People always have lottery money. You know, <laughs> lot the people always have money for lot, lottery, wild rose, and Swisher sweets. It's always good. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> lottery. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I know the ghetto pretty well myself. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Lot, the lottery is the poor tax. It's the one tax that only poor people pay. Right. Because mm-hmm. yeah, it is. Exactly. Yeah. You know, there's been many a times I've walked up, you know, well, walked out of my uh, vehicle at night, say, checking something and had to get back in. And, you know, drug drug stores and gas stations, they're and the liquor stores, they're the money makers in the, in the ghetto. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're the money makers. And I always enjoyed, even if when I was on duty, two in the morning, I'd need something to drink. Put your put your money in. They'd spin the bulletproof glass turnstile. Take the money and put your drink in it and turn it back out. Yeah, I'm sure you've been into those places. Too. Yeah, that's always. I mean, that's you know, that's when it's yeah, when it's to the point that you can't. It used to be where you could reach under, but like, and then they would do the drawer. But now, when it's basically fully segregated, that you cannot physically reach the person back there. You know, it's bad. It's like, man, right. this is a tough neighborhood. I'll tell you what was interesting, and I don't know if I, I probably mentioned this a long time ago. There's a um, there's a Porsche dealer in Cincinnati that's kind of borders a bad neighborhood. It used to be a bad neighborhood, and they sell um, what else do they sell there? They sell um, what's that car? Not Aston Martin. What's the um, Bentley? No, it's not Bentley. It's Italian. They have a horrible reputation. Oh, um, da, 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 a tongue tie. Not I, Miata. What's it called? But whatever. But yeah. But they um they have for they'll have Ferrari engines in them. Some of these cars, and they you know, they built this big. You know, Porsche has kind of a look, right? Like whatever it lit. Um, right. Um, you know, like their their stores all kind of look the same. And what's interesting is there's a um, little stop and rob next door. Stop and run. That's why I don't want to name the chain, but I. Remember, oh, I, I no, I, I just love the analogy because I, I get I it. I was coming through this neighborhood. I was, I was transiting, and I had to stop, and I was like, "Fuck!" And I, and I literally had a dude at gunpoint in this parking lot, at whatever, because he was trying to, he was going to rob me, and, um, and it's like, like literally, you could hop a you could hop a, a, a little cement curb and now you're in the Porsche dealer. And I was in that dealer when I was like looking for places to get my car serviced. And I just was like, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm just, I just thought it was bad mojo. I'm like, yeah, I'm not getting my car. I'm not coming down here. I'm just, I just, you know, I know it's like gentrified and it's better, but I'm like, you know what, dude, I fucking, <laughs> fucking guy. And, 
Um, I'm just like, I'm not, I don't want to spend the rest of my life thinking about that every time I drive down to the Porsche dealer. So I was like, yeah, you're not going to get my business. Done. Would it be Maserati? You're yes. Thinking of? Yeah. That's what it is. Maserati. Yeah. Horrible reputations, horrible reputations. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But They're terrible. I cars. believe you can get your Ferrari worked on down there because they, because some of the Maseratis have Ferrari engines for some reason, I, I guess. Well, that's my understanding. Well, don't you, don't you have a independent foreign car shop that's pretty good like most towns yeah we have a couple we have yeah we have more than a couple we have a lot of them um like there's a uh, there's a guy that specializes in bentley's and rolls royce and you'll even see the local billionaire's car there um cars there um i've actually posted some photographs do you remember i posted a photograph of is it the S type? You know the Jaguar from like the. It's got the long front end and the bubble and the bubble canopy rear. Is that an S type? That's a XJ six. XJ is that what that is? Yeah, they had one there on that lot. It was for sale. That was at that boutique Bentley Rolls independent dealer. And then there's a couple Porsche places. Um, I, I I I'm not that much into the scene. There was I tell you what there was a guy. And I, I, I just had found him on the internet. He, I guess he was, wor he was known throughout the country as a BMW expert and like on these high end BMWs and collectible BMWs. And, um, he apparently sold cars to, is it Paul Walker? Like from the Fast and Furious movies? Yes. Yeah. Well, his, his, this guy, he's one of the best BMW guys. He was here in Cincinnati, north of the city. And I believe he got killed in a motorcycle accident um, in September of this year. Maybe it was last wow. year. Yeah, he was out riding and he just like had a single. But he was like apparently like a big deal. Um, I occasionally will drive by to where his business was. It looked like they had like a couple buildings. And it seems like, like I don't know what's going on with them. If they're still like, if they're just smaller, if they're figuring out the estate or what's or if they're trying to keep the business open, I don't know. But yeah, that's one of the, that's a big guy that's here. Locally. He was, but he's dead now, but I'm sure there's, wow. I'm sure there's more. I mean, if you, you know, if, if you look, you'll find them. Well, that's, what's nice about uh, driving my car. I could just pull into the Walmart and get their, their oil chain special. Well, you know, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, you know, that's kind of the nice thing about a Mercedes too. I mean, you could spend a lot of money on a Mercedes or a Maybach, and you can travel across country, and you can find a Mercedes dealer. Car work, right? On. Oh, speaking about uh, markups of cars, did, I don't. Maybe I could find it. And I could send it to you. Based on price per unit, do you know what car manufacturer ray, uh, raised above? MSRP more than any other dealers in the United States? Probably Porsche. Kia. What? Kia. $25,000 car, um, pinstriping, $10,000. And people were paying it. People paid that? Well, they just... Yes. You know what? You obviously want to be broke. I mean, you know, you, That's if, what if I you paid thinking. that shit for a Kia... And just and they have the ability someone steal your car a Kia which is so apparently apparently you can steal a Kia easier than it is for me to turn a key to start my truck. Yes, you can. That's why. Let's just say when I I have a Kia that I use for work. Let's just say uh, I don't leave home without it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And because some you know it's, it's like. I I always park it in a. I never thought I'd have to say I park a Kia in a well lit area. Oh my god, it's unreal! Like it's so bad that like, uh, I mean, I if I mean, it's become an issue. Like Kia's had to address it. I think I saw there's some kind of they're trying to they're trying to make like recalls or aftermarket changes to the cars. So, well, my my insurance premium is indicative of those easy to steal. See, I'd sell that fucker. I'd get the hell out of that car. You know, I probably will. Yeah, because it's just, yeah. I mean, that's just. Yeah. It's a good little car. It really is. Unless you want it to get for. stolen. You know. Uh, no, no, no. My luck, they would take uh, you know, my 
thousands of dollars worth of uh, sports equipment that I carry in it all the time. Yeah, they take, you know, what it is, they would, they would trash the car to the point that you don't total it, but so then you have to keep it and you're like, fuck. And so, you know, because, you yeah, know, people like, they're not going to, it's not like they're going to take your Kia and it's going to end up in Mexico. You know what I mean? Like, Probably. your Kia is just, they're going to joyride it until uh, they get caught or they get chased and then it'll get, it'll get wrecked and then you'll get it back. So, like, they're not chopping these cars up. They're not selling them. No, they're they're dry riding them. They're doing crimes. They're doing drive bys, and it's your license plate on it. Don't they? Don't they actually have a group in Chicago where they call them the Kia Boys? Yes, <laughs> it, it's very prevalent here in the Chicagoland area. There's a it's a gang of car thieves called the Kia Boys. Damn, I mean, that's just that's just yeah. terrible. So, well, and, well, and also. Uh, in addition to Kia being, you know, their the unit price, uh, you know, over invoice uh, squeezing people, Kia was also named the worst dealership to uh, buy a car from in the United States. Really? Well, what's the criteria for that? I don't know. I mean, I'm going to try to find that like article. You slip on vomit in the showroom? Like, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it can't be worse than buying a tractor. Uh oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, that's like really at least at point. least the Kia people want to take your money. The tractor people well, are just like they're doing you a favor. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> it's like well, I've never seen well, anything like it. Um, if you would have went in there though, more tractor knowledgeable, I don't think maybe you would have had the same experience. You mean if I'd gone in there in a uh, in an old pickup truck and some overalls? Or with me, with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, well, I mean. Well, you know what I mean, because they, they probably figured, look at this guy. Boy, if, you know, have we got a winner here we're going to sell something to. I just, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, you know. Uh, look, in, in my dealer's defense, I will say that we have reached probably detente. I don't think. They, I mean, they, they, they don't, you know, they don't, you know. <laughs> there, there's something I haven't hold, heard since the Cold War. You know, okay, I'm Kissinger, I didn't know he drove a tractor. But I mean, it's like, you know, I'm sure they don't say nice things about me when I leave, but at least they don't say, they, you know, they, they try to be nice to my face now. And it actually looks like they, they've got a new, uh, a new person that handles like support and all that. And that guy's like Johnny on the spot dealing with me. So as a matter of fact, I'm running down there tomorrow to pick up something. I'm probably going to take the Porsche. So I'll be down. I'll be down. Uh, oh, you're not taking, you're not taking the truck. No, I'm I'd rather uh -oh. put them on with the, I'm going to put the miles on the Porsche. So. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Did you ever go, um, I'm I'm brain freezing. Did you ever decide to go with that hydraulic bar or no? I I am. I just haven't bought it yet. I've been busy working on other projects. There's been I've been you know I've got the that that integrally suppressed upper gun running fine now and just working on I now now um, the barn thing is now coming to a head because it looks like I'm about to the point where the next thing's going to happen for the next thing to happen. So I just. You know, and the, when I was looking at the, at the, at the, the, what they call, what they call, because I guess I'm not a tractor guy. They call that the top link, the hydraulic top link. When I was looking Correct. at the hydraulic top links, it was literally like minus seven outside. And so it's like, I'm not going to install a hydraulic top link now. So, you know, I'll order it, you know, it's been fairly nice here lately, relatively speaking. So yeah, here today it was 48 degrees. Yeah. So we're going to get your weather tomorrow. And it rained here all day yeah. today, so that's why I was in the office. Oh, uh, we didn't get any rain. Hey, um, I did you see the amount of feedback you got on the ten round mag article? Yeah, that got um, that got a fair. Yeah, that got a lot of traction. Yeah, that got a lot of traction. You know, and like I, uh, unfortunately, it turns out it was ill timed. Uh, with yeah, with, because that that's the new capacity limit here in Illinois. Yeah, that's the new capacity limit. So it's like you know, like look, I mean, I I lived through the assault weapons ban, and I, I'm not saying that crippled magazines are worth it. I just was making the argument why you should maybe make it a habit of having one little shorty magazine with your, you know, your favorite burp gun. Well, I would like I would like a ten round. You probably think this is nuts, but let's say you're in a claustrophobic type 
uh, situation and you need to spin, you're not spinning that whole big 30 rounder that, you know, a nice little 10 could uh, do the job. I'm thinking that's just me though. You know, the, th- the reality for target acquisition, that's, a, that's, that's like an example of theory versus reality. The reality is the ARs are so, they're so well balanced and they're not that heavy to begin with. And if you, you know, if you don't make it a pig, Honestly, and where the mag, that 30 round mag where it sits, you can literally do 180. The size of that magazine makes no difference. As a matter, you'll actually, you'll feel like if you've got a, a flashlight and a, and a, and a tech, like a laser designator out on the front of your rifle, you'll feel that way before you'll even notice a 30 round or 10 round magazine on the AR. Just flip well, it I would because I, I have a eight battery uh, mag light taped to my. <laughs> taped to the bottom of mine so it, it's not balanced very well so well that reminds me so what do you what is the do you have any guns in illinois that would be banned with they, the new law no because unfortunately i was fishing and they fell in the river okay so <clears throat> so you don't need so you know you, you pick up one of those hk vp9 with the 10 round mags is not going to be a problem um, <laughs> I hate you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. <laughs> the next time you're down, um, we're going to get you on the range, and you're going to shoot that um, that suppre- that integrally suppressed AR, and you're uh, it's the cat's meow. It's a nice. Well, gun. I, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. But you know what? Uh, <laughs> I did have to laugh because I happened to go by a. Um, a gun store after that bill was signed and in the class case he he had at least 10 revolvers yeah yeah probably yeah yeah he did it's like he was hoarding them wait thinking this was going to go through yeah i mean you know i mean look you 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 know you're you're in a gun business you got you got to plan for the future you know, you got you got to have you got to have a product to sell. You know, like I know a one company that's uh, well known, and they came out with a bolt action rifle, and they were perfectly honest about it, and it became a successful rifle. But their argument, their justification for doing it was they were looking at the future, and they thought, well, uh, we think there's a good chance of an assault weapons ban coming, so we're going to make a bolt action gun. They're not going to ban our gun at least right now. So they so they put millions of dollars into this bolt action gun. As opposed to, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, an assault rifle, which they had one anyway. Um, right. You know, for the military. But, you know, it was interesting because they were like, we wanted to diversify and have a product that if they ban our gun that we sell to the military from civilian sales, we want to have a bolt action gun that, you know, the tactical guys can run it, the precision guys can run it, and the hunters can run it. And, you know, that was a, I mean, you know, that's in the small print, but if you talk to them and they're honest, they're like, we were seriously concerned because, you know, we thought that, you know, Hillary was going to, we thought that Hillary was going to be president. Right. Yeah. You know, right. So, yeah. Well, those that, those that bought the $300 Savage uh, 308s and 30s and, you know, all that nice little things are the ones probably laughing right now. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean. You know, I'm, they're good guns. Yeah, I mean, you know, but the, you know, the thing is, those guys, you know, all they have to do is look at Canada. Like all those people that are like, well, you know, you know, they, you know, the, all that flood argument. Like, you know, they, you don't need an AR, you don't need this, you don't need that. In Canada, they're banning uh, straight pull guns, bolt actions, twenty two plinker guns. Like, it's just crazy. Like they're banning all these. Like the they're banning all of these FUD based guns now, and it's like, yep, that's what yeah happens. they are. That's what happens. So well, that's what's we well, we've been whatever. going for a while, and hopefully this recorded, and hopefully the audio is okay. So anything else you want to cover before? I mean, I, we don't have to do we don't have to do a police blotter. It, I'm, I'm excited. No, I I don't have really nothing <laughs> nothing to add to the blotter too much. You know, it's just uh, you're tired. I'm tired. You know, it's uh, you got another full day tomorrow. So it's just, let's just hope this damn thing report records because this is number three in our trilogy. So let's hope it goes. Okay, well that wraps up episode two eighty five of the John nineteen eleven podcast. 
If you want to see any more stories or pictures or links of anything we discuss, please go to the website at john1911.com. That's J-O-H-N-1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good night. Bye-bye.